Sunday of Sunday, February the 14th. And as usual, thanks must be extended to Trevor and to David and to Penny, who've organized for the taping of this short worship service. Now today, and in honor of St. Valentine, we're going to set aside our lectionary readings in order to learn a few things about a man whose name was Valentine of Temi. Now, historians don't know much about his early life, save that he lived during the third century and that he first worked as a doctor before becoming a priest. Now, interestingly, as a priest, he became well known for marrying couples who were unable to legally wed. And they couldn't wed because the emperor, Claudius III, wanted a very large and strong army. And in light of that desire, he believed that marriage would be an obstacle to recruiting soldiers. And he further believed that marriage would distract his existing soldiers from their work. When Claudius found out that Valentine was performing marriages, he sent him to jail. However, jail didn't stop him. Valentine continued to receive and to reach out to guests. And he said that he served them with the love that came from Jesus. At one point, he befriended his jailer, a man called Asterius. Asterius became so impressed with Valentine's wisdom that he asked him to help his young daughter with her lessons. Because daughter Julia was blind and she needed someone to read material to her so that she could learn it. Valentine and Julia became friends. At a later point, Claudius also came to like Valentine and he offered him pardon and he promised to set him free if Valentine would renounce his faith. Valentine refused. Moreover, he also encouraged the emperor to place his own faith in Christ. And this encouragement enraged Claudius. He sentenced Valentine to die on February the 14th in the year 269. Valentine was beaten, stoned, and beheaded. However, his story didn't stop with death. News began to circulate about the miracles he had performed during his life. It was said that he cured Astorius's daughter Julia of her blindness. And people also reported that after his death, when they asked his spirit to intercede on their behalf, they experienced dramatic improvements in their relationship with their boyfriend, their girlfriend, or their spouse. Over time, Valentine came to be regarded as a saint for the love with which he helped young people and lovers. In the year 496, Pope Galatius designated February the 14th as Valentine's official feast day. Now today he is widely regarded as the patron saint of young people, love, engagements, and marriage and also perhaps of the birds and the bees um, as the patron saint of beekeepers. Now here's an interesting postscript. Valentine's Day in North America is the second largest card giving holiday. This card giving began with Valentine himself. Apparently after he was sentenced to die, he wrote his jailer's daughter, his young friend, Julia, a note. And in it, he encouraged her to keep her new Christian faith, and he thanked her for being his friend. He signed the note, your Valentine. Now with two short scripture passages about love, about the love of God for us, and the love which by God we are able to share with others. The first 
is from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. If I speak in the tongue of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And from the first letter of Jesus' disciple, John, the one who keeps God's commandments lives in God and God in them. And this is how we know that God lives in us. We know it by the Spirit given to us. Dear children, Therefore, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and with truth.
As we draw near to you, quiet our minds, refresh our spirits, inspire our hearts, bind us together with your truth. We dwell in your promise, rest in your grace, bathe in your restoration, meditate on your goodness. O oh God, bind us together with your love. Amen.